five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is the Ramble. See, it says Alex, the Ramble. And we go until midnight tonight, Eastern Time, here on the uh, East Coast of the United States of America. And uh, hi, how are you? I'm uh, here. Okay, listen, we got to do, uh, we're going to have, uh, we're going to have my ex-wife on here in a second. And I just want to tell you tonight, she's a little out of sync. Yeah, because if something happens with Skype and the, she goes out of sync and, and we, uh, I have no idea why. Uh, but here's the good day news. Uh, I, I uh, did some tinkering around and I think it, it will still be out of sync, but it won't be as bad as it was when we recorded it because I have an offset thing. I, you, you don't need to know how the, uh, how the meat is made, do you? You, know, you just don't want to know how the cow is killed. You just want to see the show. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's go check in. Ladies and gentlemen, why, you, you know something? I was thinking about this when I, we were talking before the, we started recording this. How good Ronnie Bennett looks today. I mean, you, you're, you look in the peak of good health. I, well, you know, my new favorite line is that I made up myself even, mm-hmm. is if I didn't know I had cancer, I wouldn't know I have cancer. Yeah. You know, the thing that's worse is COPD, but it's getting easier to handle because I've got such a great bunch of people, nurses in rehab that are teaching me how to deal with it. And, um, and I feel good. I mean, you I'm, look, I mean, you're right. Uh, you know, you don't know it, and we wouldn't know it because you look terrific. You just yeah. look terrific. So, I mean, uh, what the hell, you know? Um, <laughs> live a good life and leave a good-looking corpse or something like that. I don't know what the that saying was, is. Who was the, there was a movie star who died really, really young mm-hmm. that said that line in a movie. Yeah. And I can't remember who it was. It was someone. It was would be our age now, I think. Yeah, yeah. But he died very young. Um, Happy New Year. Happy New Year I, to you too. I this was this recording is recording this on New Year's Day. We were so recording happy. this New Year's Day, but it's going to be on a couple of days from now. So you know, I, yeah. because I have to talk about a friend of mine who died this week. My one of my closest personal friends, uh, Jack Garfine, who was. Uh, I'm sorry. He, you talked I, about. I've him talked him. about him, and I love the man. I, and we were with him a few hours before he passed. So, uh, you know, it, 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 somehow, you know, what's what's strange is, I knew this guy when he was older. I only met him when he was older, but he was vital, you know. And then as the years couple of years have gone by i've seen him decline in health and decline in health and finally the other night there i am with him with tubes in his mouth and not conscious at all he's kind of uh, a la la land with all the drugs that are in him and you know it's just not the person that you knew you know but i leaned down to him and i told him how much i loved him and kissed him on the forehead and and, and said my goodbyes, and I was very happy to be able to do that, you know. We don't often get to do that except with our closest relatives. Yeah. Um, you know, I was looking at one of those, you know, the endless end-of-year compilations on television mm-hmm. for all different kinds of things. Yeah. And, of course, one of them, the one that had come up on screen for me that right then was um, all the famous people, musicians yeah, and writers we, yeah. and sports yeah. people and all that stuff, who died during the year. Damn thing wouldn't end, Alex. It wouldn't end. Are you? Are you? Are you are you you're not talking. You're not. But let ta- me finish. Let yeah. me finish. I got teary after a while. I mean, when they do certain kind of people, like the sports people, I don't know anything about sports. I can't yeah. possibly care. But most of the rest, I at least heard of, and many of them are entertainers of different kinds that I have watched all my life. They're my contemporaries, mm-hmm. and. I'm wondering, because I've never been here before and I've never heard anybody speak of it before, or at least only glibly, not how I'm trying to approach it, 
is that when the touchstones of your generation go away, mm -hmm. when they disappear now in large numbers at our age, it's very hard to know your place mm -hmm. or if you even belong in the world anymore. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, there, there's a there's a singer, a young singer. I think her name is Lizzo. Mm -hmm. And I didn't hear about her till recently. Apparently, she's had some big hit or did mm -hmm. something that got her a lot of publicity. That's not my generation. You know, mm -hmm. my generation is the Beatles and all that were that age. You know, in the age contemporary to the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and um, and so on, whether they were actors or musicians or whatever. And I got quite weepy about how my life is kind of, the periphery of my life is thinning out. The mm -hmm. touchstones aren't there anymore. Do you know? Do you have, uh, no, I know, I, I, know, I know what you're saying because as I get older, I find that uh, well, people are dying on me. I mean, people who were, as you say, touchstones. And I go, well, you know, that's the bad news. The good news is I'm 80. You oh, know. see, that's that's not what I'm talking yeah. about. No, no, I'm not but, talking no, but about. But I know what you're. No, but I do know I'm what you're talking about. about. The atmosphere I live in, mm -hmm. and as these people, my contemporaries that I've followed all my life, just keep falling away. There are fewer and fewer and fewer of them left. I feel like I don't exactly belong in the world anymore. I certainly don't understand the sensibility of our culture anymore because I'm just not part of it. Do you want a scary thought? If you and I, you and I together went to your, I don't know, 30th high school reunion or something like that. You know, 40th. 40th. <laughs> if you were to hold a high school reunion a day, how many people would be there? I don't know. I have no idea. Not very many. You know, I mean, because as time passes, people that, you know, that, yeah, and I, that doesn't mean much to me because I don't have any memory of high school. I mean, when I got out of high school, I just left. I never. No, no, I agree with you again. on that part of it. You know, but what I'm saying um, is, but is I that, don't have any memory of them, yeah. so they don't mean anything. Well, to what me. I'm just saying is the the question of how many of those people would be alive right now, and the answer is maybe a quarter. Yeah, and this, and see that doesn't resonate with me because I don't. I couldn't give you a name of a person I went to high school with. I have no memory. Well, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my high school reunion when there's nobody to show up. So that's, you know. Um, but but you know, but see the high. My point is though that the high school people we knew then in high school aren't part of our lives from then on. So they don't. I don't care. They don't give me a sense of the world I live in in the way that all the people I've worked with and, you know, been friends with or enemies with or whatever, and all of the peripheral people that we see in movies and television and rock concerts and, you know, whatever it is that we do that entertain ourselves, we have, there are stars among them. And they become kind of the periphery of our culture. Yeah. And they're not, lots and lots of them aren't there anymore. By the way, I want to say to the audience, Ronnie is probably a little out of sync today. I'm in sync, so that means that it's Skype that's the problem, and I can't do anything about it. So just listen to her words. That's what's important. Um, yeah, you know, um, I just, you know, I, I just have come to the, the conclusion. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever been at much at peace with myself as I have been in the last couple of months, you know, going through this whole cancer scare thing and so on. Uh, that I, I came to realize, I mean, I said to, to myself, why do I have prostate cancer? And the answer is the number one contributing factor is I'm 80 years old because men of my age, 70% of them will have prostate cancer. So have you gotten from a why me to why not me yet? No, I've gotten, I've gotten actually to a, I understand why me. You know, I mean, I don't have what you have there, people have no, it's to, not about. It's not yeah, about. Wait, wait, let, let me finish. People have to know there are different. I'm, I, every now and then, when I say, "Well, I've got prostate cancer," people go, "Oh, I'm so sorry for you," and I go, "Wait a minute, hold on a second. 
I don't have pancreatic cancer. I don't have lung cancer. I've got prostate cancer, which is very common and very, very treatable, okay? Uh, but uh, I don't know. It just made me reassess things because I've had to go through this process of fear and so on and so forth. And finally, I've said, well, thank God, now I know what it is, and we're going to do something about it. Now, is it, does that sound like me, <laughs> you know, the hypochondriac? You know, I. Well, it's not. It's not. You know, jeez. Did you ever get rid of all those cysts? I remember that every day <laughs> of our lives together, you came over and you pulled up your shirt and back, and you said, "Would you feel these things and tell me if they've grown?" Alex, I did. I have no. I I, I went along with it because it was easier than arguing with you. About and that. It. And how old was I when I was doing that? I was like in my. 30s? Maybe yes. 20s? Yeah. Uh, no, I had a, I still have it. I still have that bump in the in the back. I think, yeah, it's still there. I'm just feeling it now. Yeah. And I had a doctor I once tell I me. I really, I'm, I'm no longer, I don't have to listen to that anymore. I'm not married to you anymore. Yeah. Um, so I don't have By to. By the do way, that. does this look it's inflamed to you? <laughs> does this look inflamed to you? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm, I'm, it's funny, I'm less of a hypochondriac now over this thing than I was in all the things that I ever worried about. I was worried well, the, All constantly. the stuff you worried about was make-believe. I, this is real. I know, this is real, and somehow I can deal with real. You know, this yeah. very is very silly. But I, you know, I, I just say to everybody, don't give me your sympathies or stuff when I say I've got prostate cancer. I'm just telling you, I've got prostate cancer. So what's going, you know, what's going to happen? I'm going to. But gonna wait a minute. There's something funny I have to tell you. Another friend yeah. agreed with me, is that once you've been diagnosed with a, you know, the word cancer is a pretty dire yeah, word, right. whatever kind you're talking about. Right. The, just the word alone scares out all of us, you know. Yeah. And what happened after my pancreatic cancer? is everywhere I turned, people were talking about pancreatic cancer. Every television drama or movie writer mm -hmm. who needed a dire plot point, he chooses mm -hmm. pancreatic cancer suddenly in my life. <laughs> oh, well, you know, he's got pancreatic cancer, the, whatever the line is in the movie or the TV show. Yeah. And then you re every time you turn around, this is supposed to be, and it is, it's not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Pancreatic is a kind of cancer that very few people get compared to breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer. And, but it doesn't matter. Every time you turn around, once you have it, somebody gets diagnosed with it. Right, right. And just this week, there was Representative John Lewis. Really? You know, one, hmm? a, a John Lewis, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, who was diagnosed with it this week. I mean, you start to think, that, and just last week, something I was watching on TV is sure enough, pancreatic cancer came up in the dialogue. <laughs> it just won't stop. Uh, wow, wow, yep, yep, yep. So uh, I mean, that's uh, that, that. That's uh, you know, I it, it I I don't uh, I'm not getting that because I I I don't have what you have. And I, oh, you I, just give yourself a little more time. It'll start happening. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, you know, I mean, I certainly, it, uh, you know, I saw an ad for cancer the other day, I think, that... that uh, oh, of, you, you hit the mute button when those come on? Uh, uh, that, yeah, well, the, there's one about this woman who's sitting there, and she's looking at her, somebody who's talking to her and saying, Marge, or whatever her name was, you've got cancer. And I'm going, wow, that... And I try to turn it off. <laughs> Does that commercial you can't get... turn it off? Huh? You can't. Did you say you can or cannot turn I, it I off? I turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I hit the mute button. I have got the fastest mute button finger in the world these days. I don't want to hear these commercials about how this place or that place. They never say they can cure cancer, but they kind of apply, imply it. I mean, it's really kind of an insidious, ugly thing. Because the implication always is we cure cancer here. Well, you don't cure every kind of cancer. No, not at all. And not every time. So, you know. Yeah. So I want to show you something. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the things that I do to preserve my sanity is I don't sleep well. I haven't slept well for decades. Mm -hmm. And then once the cancer came along, I thought if I'm going to get through this with some amount of 
you know, uh, clarity or something. I need to sleep more than three or four hours a night. Well, I live in Oregon where marijuana is legal. And I had done all of the -the over-the-counter things and all that stuff. And nothing would keep me asleep past four hours. So I started trying what has to be called cannabis now. It's the, that's the way you're supposed to say it apparently here instead of pot, weed, you know, all of that. And there are these dispensaries that are wonderful stores. And of course I can't be smoking. Um, so I use edibles and they come in the cutest ways. And I thought I would show you because I have several, one of the things both a medical doctor told me, and one of the bud masters at one of the dispensaries separately told me, mm-hmm. is that any any drug that you take that helps you sleep, I think this applies to other drugs too, but I'm not sure, will over time become less effective. Mm-hmm. And there, each of them told me the same thing. Get different kinds and just use different ones on different days and then your body won't get used to the same one over and over again. Right. So I hit the dispensary. I've always had a couple around. So I hit the dispensary and I, I thought I would show you some of these because they're kind of cute. This is my tincture. Your tincture? Tincture. And I put it under my tongue. It mm-hmm. comes with a like an eyedropper. And I use that. I've used that for a long time and it's effective, but it had started to wear off, which is why I got into trying these other things. This one, this little round thing, Mm -hmm. these are little hard candies with a lot of THC in them. Mm -hmm. You can get them with only CBD, too. Do you know the difference? What is the difference? THC gets you high. CBD doesn't. Oh, okay. So if you've got something um, that's mostly CBD, you won't get high. But I tried that to sleep because I don't care. I'm going to sleep. Why do I care if I get high or not? Except it doesn't work to keep me asleep, but THC does. Okay. So you see this, this little package here? Yeah. yeah. It comes with this little blue thing and a little blue gummy in there. Yeah. And I can cut them up. And there are about six servings in there. Mm-hmm. And that's another. This one is flavored. Oh, this is huckleberry. Do you get high from that or is that the CBD? If I stay awake long enough, but I'm usually asleep. <laughs> uh, it puts me to sleep quite effectively. Um, this is chocolate, little cho- little teeny chocolate candies. I tried my first one two nights ago. It works beautifully. Yeah. This is really good. The brand name is Mule. Is Mule? Why is and it called Mule? I don't. It's the name of the company. I don't know why they name their company anything. Anyway, it's raspberry. Mm-hmm. I've used it all up, and it was really worked. So I'm going to get more of that. And look at this one. This one, and can you see the number on this? I'm holding it 45. up. 45. 45. Most of them tell you that they won't take effect. Edibles don't take effect for about two hours mm-hmm. before they kick in. Mm-hmm. Um, this one says 45 minutes. I tried it. I don't know. I fell asleep, so I don't know if it works or not um, in that respect. <laughs> and then there's this pretty little box, and this is grape cannabis fruit juice. And it's got a little thing in here. Wow. So, and, and this barely scratches the surface. You've there. gone, sh- you've gone shopping, haven't you? I went shopping. Yes. How much does that stuff cost, by the way, where you are? Oh, you know, edibles like this one. I think this was twelve dollars. Really? Another was ten. Another was eight. Really? Yeah. There's another though that this is expensive. Uh, this size bottle, the tincture, mm. I think is $24, $27. And there's a larger bottle about this tall, and it's way more, like $50, maybe $60. Um, yeah. But you, know, you don't have to spend that kind of money to get what you're going for. So. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, yeah, I'm jealous, you know. We sit here in New York. Uh, I thought that you, you had recently... We, ha- we have medical, but it's you have to go through so many hoops and stuff to get it that most people find it impossible to get it. I have so. to tell you a funny story about that. When I first moved here to Oregon, only medical marijuana was legal, and mm-hmm. there were dispensaries, but you had to have a card that you got right. from a doctor. Right. And um, <laughs> on late-night television, when they run lots of 
local commercials. Yeah. There was a doctor when I, and he would come and tell you about your anxiety, your problems with anxiety and this and that. Come mm-hmm. see him and he could help you. I mean, this was without quite saying it, a blatant thing is I'll give you a marijuana card. Yeah. <laughs> and he looked, I didn't know it, of course, at the time, but he looked a whole lot like Trump's weird doctor. Do you remember him? <laughs> yeah. He looked a whole lot like him. <laughs> and then a couple of years later, they legalize, and they do, and it seems to work this way in every state. First, it's only medical marijuana, and then in a couple of years, because I suppose because doctors just keep hanging, hanging, handing out the the cards, they just switch it over to recreational or whatever you want. Use it for whatever. Oh, and you know what else? What? There are two different dispensaries I go to regularly. Mm-hmm. Both of them have told me that over 50% of their customers are old people, older than 65, that use it for arthritis, that use it like I do for sleeping, and those kinds of remedies, you know, everyday remedies that we all use. And most, you would, I mean, my thought was, oh, there's nothing, going to be nothing but kids in these places, but it's old people like you and me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it, it's it's still wonderful that you can get it, and I'm jealous that I can't. Okay. Well, and it works in terms of sleep. It works better than anything else I ever tried. I can actually stay asleep for seven hours straight. Wow, that's terrific. That's yeah. terrific. Well, you know, I mean, it's therapeutic and it's fine and it's good. Uh, we also like to use it recreationally. Some friends from another state yes. sent us uh, a. a one of these uh, vapes, okay, with the with the pot. It's a it's a major company that is is known for the fact that the cartridges do have pot in them and not vitamin E and crap like that. And I got to tell you, I don't like that vaping. It just it it's like raspberry flavored or something. And I why go, are you doing it? Have you not read about what's happening from well, that? Well, I'm not dead yet, and I only do like one every now and then, so it's not. Yeah, good. well, that's what happened. Like the third time, there was one kid who talked about it. The third time. Wow. wow. Don't do that. Don't oh, well. do. That. Oh, I'm not anymore. I'm back to doing the joints because I love the smell of pot. <laughs> you know. Oh, you know. Wait until it's legal there. It will be because. When you walk into a dispensary <laughs> here, it's just wow. It just, it, and they've got these wonderful little jars, and they're all labeled. You might not remember this. Yeah. But I used to label our marijuana that I kept it in little jars. Yeah. yeah. That we had. So some was good for music, and some was good for sleep, and some was good for sex, and so on. Yeah. And I had them all. I don't remember if I was. We were still married, or that was after we broke up. And uh, so, you, but you know, it, it's some, they'll be there. The dispensaries will be there in the not too distant future. And it's it still surprises me every time I open the door to go to the dispensary, and this aroma hits me in the face. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's uh, the new business. Yes. You know. uh, it, you and know, it's here, like I don't know about the other states. I guess it is true in every state. It's only a cash business. I think about uh, well, that. Well, there's a reason why it's a cash business, and that's because the government won't allow them to bank the money. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, but they but have the, all of the money stuck in suitcases and people's attics or something. <laughs> For the people who own these places, it, I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. A I know. lot of there's something twenty odd states that have at least medical marijuana, and they should deal with that business the same way. Any business is dealt with. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is that what happened was in, in Colorado, they couldn't find banks that would hold their money. So they had safes and safes and safes of money, yeah. and they had it's to hire so people to guard them. Well, no, it, that changed because banks couldn't take their money, but uh, these credit unions could. So the money was then deposited into credit unions, and that took a great load off of them of having cash and cash and cash and cash, you know. <clears throat> Still, it shouldn't have to be that way. No, of course it shouldn't have to be that way. And it is a therapeutic drug, as you as evidenced by your experience with it. And uh, I think it's time we grew up, you know. I remember, I, I love to tell the story about the time years ago, at my apartment in, uh, down in uh, uh, 14th Street, or which was our apartment at one point. Uh, I'm sitting, I'm lying there, 
on the on the rug uh, with a, in a big beanbag chair, and next to me is my old friend P.J. O'Rourke. And P.J. looks at me as we're passing this joint back and forth and says, you know, by the time we're older, this is going to be legal. Well, it sure, sure took a hell of a fucking long time <laughs> right. to Dude. get to that point. You know, it wasn't like <laughs> tomorrow or 10 years from now, I'm still here in New York City, 80 years old, and they have yet to totally legalize marijuana. You know, of all of our problems in the world, even when you're talking about people's drug problems and vaping problems and that sort of thing, way down on the list, I mean, in the very, very, very bottom of the list should be marijuana. We've got big problems. This should not be something that the government's making a big deal about. Well, I mean, the, it, but it's the government that's preventing it. It's the yes, government that's, that's swooping saying. in and saying, well, it's illegal federally. Well, fuck you, it's le illegal federally. Whatever happened to states' rights, you know? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you yell about states' rights you all the be time. You about states' rights. Well, no, but you yell all the time about states' rights, and then when you have a states' rights issue, like the legalization of marijuana, you get all uppity, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't understand it. Makes no sense to me. You know. Nor me. Do you have any predictions for the new year? Well, we're running out of time here, but let's go over because fuck it. I got all the time in the world. I got two hours a night. Um, uh, you're, uh, and, and by the way, for the audience, yes, she is out of sync. I've been trying to get her in sync, but I, it, 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 I would have to do a whole thing with it, and I haven't got time for that. So just listen to her words and close your eyes if it's bothering you. Any predictions for the next year? Yeah, uh, Trump's going to get reelected. And your reasons? Uh, my reasons are, who have the Democrats got? I mean, who are they putting up that is going to be able to take on this son of a bitch and gain at the same time uh, that magic you need to have people get just absolutely enthralled by you? You know? I mean, well, there's the way nobody running on the Democratic side that would get that kind of response. I mean, but Obama did. Who you know. would you choose then, having nothing to do with who's running at the moment? Oh, I don't know. Robert Redford. I don't know. You know, I, 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 I don't think, I think the problem is, is that I think it's America that's gotten stupid. Okay. I, I, I don't blame Trump on Trump. I blame Trump on America. These are the people who put him into power, and these are the people who probably are going to keep him in power because they believe the, the, the you know the memes and the and the, the whole thing about oh the you know life is better for people and blah 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 blah. Well, it's not better for me. I don't know if it's better for you. You know, it's better for Trump's friends. But I mean, I just I don't know. I just think it, it it's going to take you know. It isn't Bernie Sanders. Uh, he's too old and too. He's too. How can I put it? He's too socialistic for for this country. I I like what he says. I agree with what he says, but he could never win against Trump. And neither could Elizabeth Warren. He would just take her to the woodshed. And Biden, he's already uh, neutralized. So who's left? Buttigieg outside bet that he could win because he, he's got a whole bunch of things in his favor. Like, there's very little Trump could go after, and he's not going to go after him because he's gay, because that would be completely uncalled for, I mean, even for Trump. So what does he go after him for? His, his, his military record? I don't think so. You know, a whole bunch. He's even, you know, inexperienced. Well, at least he's a mayor. Trump wasn't anything. He was the host of a goddamn reality show. You know, so what it, What could he go after Buttigieg on? Plus, you look at this big fat fuck standing next to what is a pretty attractive, uh, young, vibrant guy, and you say to yourself, well, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, you know? So that's that's the problem. You know, so. And uh, if it weren't any one of the people who are running? Well, who else? I mean, it's not going to be Bloomberg. Bloomberg's a loss. No, no, someone who's not running that you would like to see run. Do you have somebody? No, I'm asking you. Well, no, I don't have anybody. I Do you realize we have three, count them, one, two, three, well, at least two and a half billionaires running for president? Yeah, 
Yep. Yep. We sure do. Um, I mean, we don't know. I don't know that Trump is a billionaire. Nobody does. But um, um, three of them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Styers. Uh, I, I would have thought that Trump had proved now two things. Well, at least one. That it, it, what, what everybody else thinking person knew before is that running a business is not the same thing as running a government. Right. And they have nothing to do much with each other. We've already proved that one so-called businessman can't run the country. So why would we think any other billionaire who own, know only about private business could run a country? Well, I agree with you. I agree with you totally. I mean, that, uh, that, uh, and that goes without saying. Plus, they do have their own personal interests at, at heart, and you don't know when that's going to come into play. So, you know, I mean... You know I, what I think is odd, too? These guys are all old. They're all in their 70s. Even, I mean, they've made more money than each individual, practically, more money than God. Mm -hmm. When do you stop the ambition, when do you back off a little? Um, I mean, they do Do rich people get drugs that make give them energy that I don't have? <laughs> well, I mean, there are people that do try to give away their money. Uh, Gates uh, has tried to give away his money, and as much as he gives away, he keeps making it all back. So at the end of the year, he's He's richer than he was before the year began. The same is true of uh, the Sage of Omaha. Who's that, Matt? Who, who are you talking about? Uh, Gates, Bill Gates. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, Bill Gates, and you've got uh, what's a Mike, uh, the uh, the Sage of Omaha, uh, the really rich guy. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, he uh, is uh, uh, giving away a lot of his money, and as much money as he gives away at the end of the year, he made more money. We and have these problems, jeez. But I, but I mean, the, uh, these are people who are willing to give back. They can only give back so much before, it, you know, it, it, there's a penalty for giving away all that money. Uh, so they give it away in parcels. What, what do you mean penalty? Well, you, because if you give away more than 15% of your income, uh, you're then having to pay taxes on that. You get a, a tax benefit. But they can afford it. So what difference all does All I'm make? saying is these guys... Guys like Gates are giving back, uh, and uh, I don't see where Bloomberg has particularly, and I don't see where, don't... where Stiers has particularly, except to his own campaign. And uh, so, uh, you know, the fact is, yes, you're right. Uh, these guys have so much money, they should give most of it away, because how much are they going to leave to their children, you know? I mean, that's, uh, uh, you know... No, I, I don't know anything. I'm not so... I. I, I don't have any opinion on them giving it away. I'm just interested that three out of the how many candidates are left now, mm -hmm. um, seven or eight, mm -hmm. three, which means nearly half, mm -hmm. are billionaires. That just doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So what's your prediction for this year? I don't have any. Well, then you ask me and then you don't have one to come up with? Well, I was playing host. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who's the host here? I'm the host, okay? I, well, I, it says the Alex and Ronnie show, and I put your name first only because I was doing alphabet. Oh, a I see. Well, you know, I mean, the thing is that uh, I don't like being called a host, first of all, because uh, um, when I was studying uh, biology in school, uh, a infection was always called the host. So I always looked upon the word host as an infection. You know. Well, what and your preference is? My preference is uh, star. No, my preference is, um, 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 uh, I guess it's host. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to go along with that on some level. So hey, we come up with something better. Hey, listen, we've run out of time and you've run out of sink. So uh, I don't know what this is with the sink. And I kept trying to change the sink on you and it didn't it didn't help all that much. But uh, oh, is it off? Bad? I'll look later and see how badly it is. Well, bad it's about, about about a second. 
And oh. uh, how much? Is, uh, well, uh, let me. When we're off, I'm going to just test this to see if I can change it to a speed that works. Okay. But anyway, I you know think the world of you, and uh, you know the way you look. Uh, you're going to leave, leave a good-looking corpse. There's no question about that. <laughs> Happy New Year, my dear. Happy New Year to you, my dear. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie Bennett. To be found at, um, uh, as time goes, ta- time goes by, dot net, time goes by, dot net. Forget it. Don't put the as in there. Time goes by, dot net. And read her musings. Read the people who write on her page. It's really a terrific, terrific blog. Oh, and she's been nice. she's been doing it since the fifth century. So <laughs> that's true. <I> feel. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. See you in a couple of weeks. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, there she was, Ronnie Bennett and uh, the uh, the uh, Ronnie and Alex show. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, she was always the boss before, and she's still being the boss now, you know, so what the heck. Anyway, uh, it's uh, time to uh, go to the uh, lines here. I'm opening them up. Oh, look, I uh, already have them open. Uh, anyway, uh, but we're here. Uh, and we're uh, uh, ready to go uh, with your calls. Uh, let me see here. Let me move this over just a little bit so I have some space here. And do that so I can start uh, bringing people in. So as they call, oh, wait a minute. i got to turn that on. Now, that was, that was on a second ago. Okay. Now you will notice that my green light is lit. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, I... Um, Charlie Wallace is calling, ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Charles Wallace, uh, a mainstay of this here programmy. Uh, let me wait till his picture comes up and then I can, uh, I, there we go. And, uh, let me see here. There's Charles and we do that. And then we, uh, we do that. And, uh, there we go. There he is. He's the first caller tonight. He's got the number one poll position as it were. Oh boy. How are you? How you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, yeah. How was your How was your uh, How was your vacation? Uh, you know, the time off that you had. Uh, let me see here. First of all, I gotta I gotta I gotta bring some other people in here. Hold on a second. Oh, stop. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, there we go. Um, here comes Phil, and uh, we also have to wait for Josh to turn on his uh, his camera. Josh, are you there? Yeah, you got me? Yeah, but I don't have your picture yet. Well, so, i got to join this call. I hung up on you, but I must have hung up like Oh, right there, we go, right there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, Josh Wheeler. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, and hold on a second. Oh, jeez. Every time I try to do something here, Josh W. Okay, here comes uh, Jeff Stein. Um and the Stein Patrol here. Here we go. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me get uh, Josh. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. Stein. There we go. He comes in. Do we have him? Okay. Let me go to the next page there so that we... Okay. So far, we have four people on the Citizen Panel. Any other takers? Anyway. So what were you doing over What were you doing over the Christmas holiday? Uh, the holiday season? The whatever? Jo- uh, Charlie, Maybe. yeah. Oh, uh, I was I was just catching up on all my binge watching all my shows. All your shows, like what is your binge? What are the sh- what are your go to binge watch shows? Well, I have I've been watching Why Women Kill on CBS All Access. Of course, the the uh, uh, Star uh, Yeah, Star Trek. Yeah, Star Trek. Oh, okay. Star Trek. Uh, uh, Discovery, and then uh, yeah. Well, Star Trek Discovery. Oh, you now have CBS All Access. Is that what you did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. Good. And you, but that's last season. So that's the last couple of seasons. So you've been doing some catching up on yeah, this it, right? Yeah. Season two. Yeah. Season two. I just finished mm-hmm. up with. And what is a new show called Hannah? I just finished that one. That was on. Uh, that was on Amazon, I believe. If I'm not yeah. mistaken, yeah, and uh, okay, so you're. Amazon. 
Prime too, yeah. So. Yeah, Marjorie's been binge watching something on uh, Netflix called uh, I can't even remember the name of it now, but it it had ten, tw- uh, twenty episodes she had to watch, so I lost her for a couple of days, you know. <laughs> And um, it's easy to do that. You get hooked. Yeah, I've been watching this uh, thing, uh, Dracula, uh, which was done by Stephen Moffat uh, in uh, England, and it's going to be on Netflix starting tomorrow. And it's three episodes, three hour and a half episodes, done by the people who did Sherlock. And I got to tell you, the first two episodes are terrific. But the third episode, just I don't know. Yeah, I can't tell you why it sucks, but it it ends okay. But the the whole part, that whole third episode is kind of like a waste. If you just zip to the end of it, <laughs> you know. Um, anyway, oh, wait a minute. Here comes oh here comes Mark Thorner. Hold on a second. Uh, while we uh, while we put Mark Thorner in the mix here, because I can't do two things at the same time. It's like patting my stomach and. Patting my head or whatever. Uh, I'm really glad he called because I wanted to ask him a question. Don't ask anything about cameras. Yeah, yeah, Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm thinking about joining the Red Dot Club. What, so, what do you mean the Red Dot Club? Uh, Mark's a Leica shooter, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm intrigued by. Yeah, the well, new nobody else, nobody, SL2. nobody else cares, Phil. Yeah. Well, wait, I'm, wait I'm a minute. Switch hold hold out on a second. Icon. Why am I not getting? Why am I? Why have I got two Josh Wheelers? I want. Um, oh, I hit Josh Wheeler. Uh, here, there's Marco Sharko, whatever it's supposed to be. There we go. Hello, Mark. Hello, Alex. How are you? Gee, we haven't seen you in a long time. How you been? Busy. Busy. What have you been doing? Well, the work which I shall not talk about here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's about it. I mean, you... I don't, if you see what I post, Alex, yeah, then you then you know what I'm up to. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I will go over to your Facebook page. I haven't been residing in a lot of other people's Facebook pages lately. Only my friend Shecky, who's in Antarctica, and I want to see the pictures. <laughs> you know. Shecky, there. Huh? Why? Why? Why not? You get to walk around in penguin poop. The shopping is fantastic. Yeah, what I found <laughs> what I found out about about Antarctica from him is that the penguins. You know, penguins poop for once every four minutes. <laughs> what? So it's not too pleasant to be around Penguin Land. No, must be smelly. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Josh, what did you do over this holiday season? Well, I'm really nothing to be honest. We're pretty. Pretty slam busy at work, so I I didn't take any extra time off this year. So yeah, yeah so I'm, literally, you know, just that. Well, tis the season to be jolly, weren't you jolly? Uh, oh gosh, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I guess. How about you? Were you jolly, uh, 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 Josh? Uh, Josh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 Miss punchy. Guy? Mark, were you jolly? <laughs> Oh, ho, ho. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Phil? Were you jolly? At this weight, I can't be anything but jolly. Ho, ho, ho. No, <laughs> you can be uh, uh, diabetic. And, uh, I, that too. <laughs> and, Char- and Charlie, of course, is diabetic as well, aren't you, Charlie? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, whatever. So, anyway, um, um, well, I'm happy to see that you're all here, and it's nice to have a few people on board who uh, who we haven't seen in a while in the last couple of days. So that's that's nice too. So that always makes me happy. Uh, anyway, oh, we got a lot of people watching tonight. Gee, what is this? I haven't done anything spectacular tonight. I guess I guess it's Ronnie that draws them in, and me that chases them away, or something like that. Anyway, um, uh, let me see here. Uh, so I have I have nothing uh, major to talk about except uh, that uh, we're all uh, we're all dead people. Uh, we yeah, better, we're going well, to war. We all better head for the bomb shelters right now, even as we speak. Uh, this president has made America unsafe for Americans. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I know what you're saying, Phil. But the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, when you got a hornet's nest, you don't poke it. 
You don't kick it out of the tree. Uh, you mm. don't stir it up. You try to contain it, but you don't try to stir it up, Phil. And this this asshole stirred the whole thing up. Yes, uh, yes, Jeff. Don't you feel a little bit uh, more scary about li uh, living in New York today? Uh, well, I never go out, so how am I going to get killed in the subways? <laughs> so, you know, I mean... <laughs> I figure if, if if you don't go out, they can't kill you. Okay, but I do. It, it, it New York's a little less safe today. I would imagine I've not been out, but I bet if I went into the subways, there'd be more police there right now. You know, something I, happened in the New York subway. Hmm. No, no, nothing happened in the New York subway, but something might. And every time there oh. is a security question, uh, they double the the uh, the force down there in the subways because you know that's the one place that if uh, if a terrorist wants to attack and it's amazing it hasn't happened yet that's the place to do it you could just snarl this you just blow one of those tunnels up and you snarled the whole damn city yeah aren't they going to ask Bernie Getz for his advice uh, uh, about subway security. Well, since that's a very old reference, and we would have to explain that joke, and we don't have time. Everybody on this show is only an old reference. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, Bernie Getz, by the way, killed some people in the subways. Or didn't kill. He, he, no, made, he shot him. He, he The guy's permanently crippled. Okay, yeah. 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 So. Well... Uh, well, I was only going to stab him with a screwdriver, you know. I mean, that's no, he wasn't going to. No, nobody know he was going to stab him. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, the, no. Yeah, no, the guy had no, a sharpened no, screwdriver. No, no, he had a he had a sharpened screwdriver, but he didn't point it at Bernie. Bernie just was went down there with a gun, looking to shoot somebody. Okay, let's be honest about it. Uh, and then he became your roommate. No, he wasn't my roommate. He, he rented my. <laughs> he, he 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 moved into my apartment, and then he went down to the subway and shot people. Yeah. Okay. And what are the chances of that happening? So I lost all chances of winning the publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes when that happened. You know. <laughs> I mean, all all uh, uh, coincidence just flew right out the window. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, because somebody called me and they said, uh, "Do you hear about that subway shooter?" And I said, "Yeah." They said, "Well, you know, they caught him." I said, "Oh, yeah." He said, "Yeah." He lived in your apartment house, your old apartment oh. house. He said, they said to me, you lived on the seventh floor, right? And I said, no, I lived on the eighth. They said, oh, my God, that's where he lived. And then I found out he was the guy who moved into my apartment when I left. And if I had never left that apartment, that kid would be walking today. So, <laughs> No, he just would have been living in a different apartment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was that. Was that. Uh but um, you know, I mean, um, I, I just, I, I just, I, 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 I never felt not safe in New York City, you know. I, I because I don't want to live my life that way. But you're right um, when you say, aren't you a little bit more worried about, you know, going down into the subways or or going out because. Uh, if they're going to hit someplace, they're going to they're going to they're going to do something here. I mean, they did something here once before, and they did it big time. That's right. Twice. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah twice. Yeah. Well, I also, you know, I have a a, a son who lives there, and and uh, and then I have a a granddaughter who wants to go to college. Guess where she wants to go? That right in NYU. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I mean, it's. Uh, it, 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 it's a little um, less safe world today than it was yesterday. Okay. I don't know. Well, you. I, I, I know. You, might, I know you I don't that, know. I don't. I know you don't know, Phil, and that's why you don't know. Well, I, I think that uh, the Iranians looked that uh, the inaction on Trump's part over the drone and and what happened in Saudi Arabia and the oil fields. I think they took that as a sign of weakness. They've done this type of thing before, and they've misjudged, uh, you know, the American uh, presence. And uh, so Trump s s set in motion uh, the fact that, hey, you can't do these things and think you're going to get away with them. So uh, this may be a deterrent. You guys may not be correct that this is going to create Phil, a Phil, more dangerous Phil, world. You're, you're dreaming. 
<laughs> You're dreaming. You really I, are. I don't you think are. so. Yes, you are. You're absolutely dreaming. Work for and Saddam Hussein? It no, worked for no, the show it, of Iran? It didn't work for Saddam Hussein. Are you kidding yes. me? Yes. Saddam Hussein kept his, his uh, people in line through fear and intimidation, but uh, that's what they understood, and, and therefore they stayed in line. As soon as you got rid of Saddam Hussein, we found out that he was a stabilizing force. The same thing with Gaddafi. You know, uh, in, in that part of the world, it seems like they can't live like we do. They got to live under. Oh, I see. Because they're terrorist. because they're 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 heathens and we're not. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's bullshit, Phil. We we uh -huh. became heathens yesterday when we killed somebody. Uh, uh, we 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 answered. We a killed somebody. See what they, 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 Trump they killed, killed people. Trump for, killed. I don't give a shit, Phil. Trump killed somebody yesterday. The good. He did the right thing. Nice. Oh, boy. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Alex. Tis the season to be jolly. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 <laughs> ho. Boom. <laughs> boom. Boom. And he's the one that can really say that, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is Santa. It's not like you're going to get the brunt of this whole thing in uh, Contra Costa County, Phil. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm already you know. I'm already on the line. Yeah, uh, yeah. protecting Shabbat. Oh and yeah, all, all you guys, all you guys, you know, didn't didn't serve in the military, you know. Yeah, uh, but I'm serving at the Shabbat in the synagogue. Yeah, but I served in the military. Okay. Thank you for your service. <laughs> yeah, Trump didn't. Trump had a bone spur. Yeah. Well, hey, you know what do you got? Something against the guy who's who's got a physical deformity? Oh yeah. Next, you'll be yeah. picking on. Patrick. Yeah, he's got a physical deformity. Look at that gut of his. You know. Yes, Kevin. Oh, I thought you had your hand no. up. <laughs> you were no, just, just moving no. your microphone around. I see. How do you feel about all this, Josh? You're the you're the uh, the expert on things. How do you feel? Well, I mean, I'm probably going to surprise a few people. I'm. You know, I'm not I'm not going to take it as far as Phil might like, but I'm also not going to completely disagree with him. I mean, for as liberal as I am on a, on a lot of things, you know, when it comes to things like defense, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a pretty hawkish person. And I mean, I, I've long time been a supporter of covert operations. I mean, I believe covert operations usually achieve more than a specific type of ground war, for example. I mean, that tends to end up in a and a mess but you know I, I mean i don't know all the details on this deal here but if this gentleman was truly an orchestrator of state-sponsored terrorism if he had killed americans if he would have killed more americans if there was good evidence for that i'm not gonna shed any tears that we took him out Especially with a drone strike, where my understanding was, you know, we didn't, as far, I, unless I haven't heard it, you know, we didn't hurt or kill any other, you know, civilians. You know, there were no eight year old kids walking by that got caught in the mess or anything, you know, and, and if that's the case, you know, I'm fine with it. Now, it does worry me a little bit because it escalates things. I mean, and I don't know that the person who made the decision can think past, you know, his nose. You know, I really don't think he can, and I don't think the people that surround him, because so many decent people have been forced out, are probably giving him good counsel anymore, because what he's done is he's surrounded himself with a bunch of groupthink sycophants mm -hmm. who won't say anything, but I think that's a great idea, Mr. Trump. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I'm a little concerned, but, uh, how, you know. How, how comfortable do you feel about this, that in, uh, when was it, uh, uh, 2011, uh, Donald Trump, I think it was 2011, yeah, November 14, 2011, uh, <laughs> Donald Trump uh, did the following tweet, Barack Obama will attack Iran in the not-so-distant future because it will help win the election. Yeah. Well, I think I he's taking... Uh, yeah, I, I think he's taking a rule from his own playbook, isn't he? Yeah. I would have that concern myself, yeah, that his motivations were not genuine. I mean, like I said, I, I mean, I'm a pretty decent supporter of 
uh, of covert actions and people <laughs> against you know the state. I mean, I'm going to be in a huge minority being on the left when I come out and say that I consider somebody like fucking Julian Assange to be a fucking enemy of the state of America. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, if 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 the news flash tomorrow was Julian Assange killed in a fucking raid by a SEAL team, <laughs> I mean, I might give a little golf clap. Sounds fine to me. That guy's no fucking hero of mine, you know. So when it comes to these kind of things, I could probably surprise some people with my, you know, with my thinking. But I would feel a little bit better if the if someone else had made the decision and were in charge because I just don't trust the people in power right now. But regardless of that, the end result, mm -hmm. I mean, how I'm, do you feel I'm from not uh, all you're, you're, up you're, or anything. you're a guy who's into the legalities of things through the you know, the uh, uh, Constitution and so on. Uh, Congress yeah. seems to feel they should have been considered and consulted in this and been able to give their go-ahead. Well... That it's the, that it, in fact, it's the law that they have to be... Well, it, it, I mean, that's a law that they have abdicated their power of relentlessly for the last, you know, five decades. So... I find the crying of many people in that a little disingenuous. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of those people that are saying that might very well be genuine. I mean, some of those people have, have ridden that horse for quite a long time, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm just, but, you know, I mean, but if Rand Paul comes out and says something about it tomorrow, the next day he'll just ag agree with, you know, or try, he changes his mind. I mean, so... There are some people that I believe about that and other people mm -hmm. that I think it's just it, they're they're in vogue with the times. They're just, you know, it's well, the it's Democrat, nice the Democrats were complaining today that he should have consulted with Congress before he did it. That is what is prescribed well, by law. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I, I'm not. I know I don't really think that. I mean, we have evolved into a presidency that has these times. And if they want to change that, then they need to get serious. Mm -hmm. This after the fact, I mean, they need to then then change it. But mm -hmm. stop the after the fact bitching and moaning about it every time it happens. Mm -hmm. Everyone acts like they're outraged. I mean, well, they they couldn't take a vote. I mean, what, what are they going to do? Is he going to were they going to have a debate on the floor? You know, last night mm -hmm. should we send a drone over there to wipe this fucking guy? Well, I, mean, out? I, I, mean, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't right? know. I don't know how you consult with them. Uh, I, right. I, you know, I, I, I think probably you would have to do it, uh, quietly, not, uh, you know, uh, as a matter right. of the world. Being and in, told, and in many yeah. of these cases, in many of these cases, they do inform, uh, the leadership, okay. you know, like, uh, what they used to call what, like the gang of eight, which was the minority and majority leaders in both houses and then I think at times it, it, it has expanded to about 12 to 14 to include the chairman and the ranking member of, like, the intelligence <laughs> committees in the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. So, but all they really do there is they send a high-ranking official over and they get him in a room at the Capitol and they say, oh, by the way, in about 15 minutes, if all mm -hmm. goes right, this guy will be dead. You know, yeah. consider yourself informed. I mean, what are they really going to do about it? Yeah, uh, but, you know? but, but uh, should he not have done that? Though I mean, it, it it is considered maybe not uh, not even good form. It's considered the law, I believe. Yeah. Right now, uh, whatever he was going to do would have gotten leaked to the press. No, and they would have tipped it, off. No, not if, uh, if it, no, not if he had done it as Josh mentioned. Yeah, it. if he did the, the fifteen minute in the room thing, he would have been fine, yeah. and he yeah. probably would have gotten a lot, a little bit. Yeah. Less and by the way, if he said to the congressional leaders, "Do not leak this in the next fifteen minutes," they probably they they certainly care about the welfare of the country. They wouldn't have done it. Okay, yeah, I would, I mean, Phil, Phil, you're taking you're taking a scenario that isn't true, Phil, to make your argument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't well, know it, if it's uh, congressional times. leaders were informed or not. I I, I didn't. I, I haven't heard. No, they weren't. The they weren't. They weren't. They weren't. They say they weren't. Yeah. At all? I mean, At not all. even the leadership yeah. or anything no. like that? No. no. Yeah. One side uh, was, the, they say that a couple of the, the Republican side were, <clears throat> it wasn't Graham and... Uh, then, then I find that a departure from normal protocol and 
I find that a little bit concerning because, uh, and but again, well, we have, it doesn't Donald this Trump? mean that we have a rogue president? I certainly think that he is stepping outside of his bounds a little bit with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you do when you do things like that is you take people who were uh, willing to support you, someone like me, mm -hmm. in, in this particular case, and then you just rub them the wrong way, right? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So right. it's, it's, it's probably not good for them. You know, do we actually know that these yeah. people or some of these people weren't informed? Yes. Yeah. Well, they say yes. I mean, I, I haven't seen, e you know, either way, but we've got a, the answer. It seems to be yes from a couple people. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what I saw. Right. Now, did, I mean, I that, 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 you know, I, my question is, did, did Obama, before he pulled off the raid to get Saddam Hussein, uh, not Saddam Hussein, but uh, Osama bin Laden, did he inform anybody or did he have to in that situation? I don't know. I don't. I, I, I mean, I don't I don't know if they have to or not. I thought there was a federal law that said they were required to inform. But if I remember right from past cases, it's so like most of our laws like that. So ambiguously written, you know, when is they have to be informed and, and mm -hmm. how much detail? You know, I really don't know. And I mean, I you know, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know that there's a black and white standard that must be informed, you know, 30 minutes before. Well, Josh, writing. if there are exigent circumstances uh, and uh, they didn't have time to inform because they just had a s small window of opportunity, uh, you know, is, is that well, Probably uh, they did. They probably had a larger window because supposedly this guy was hanging out where at the airport. And he was there. That was his headquarters. <laughs> well, well, what what he, was saw, he was waiting uh, for a flight out. Yeah. What? Trump was planning it for several point. days, from what I heard. Yeah. He was planning it for several days. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Th this this sort of operation struck me as something that was uh, fairly well thought out. <clears throat> wasn't a spur of the moment. Must have taken on the ground intelligence more than likely to track movement, verify uh, movement. They, yeah. I mean. And, and and to verify, you know, not only is the target active and, and, and available, but is in a place and at a time where, like I was saying earlier, you know, we're going to be able to get him and we're not going to get the eight-year-old kid riding by on the skateboard or whatever. Yeah. Right? Do you, you think, know, do you think mean, that we've, the, everybody, do you think that we've maybe um, um, sounded the, the uh, starting bell, or the, sh the starting gun, as it were, for a full-out war in that area in which we are going to be the main participants? I mean, I really don't know that it'll go that far, but, again, I would feel a lot better about that answer if somebody else were the president of the United States. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I just, I, that is a legitimate concern. Yeah, I mean he, I you know because I don't, I don't trust him to handle this this type of situation. Yeah, I mean as sad as it is, job. I mean as as sad as it is to say, yeah, I mean good. I would feel better okay. if you know we had George W. Bush. Mark back. Mark, 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 has Mark, his Mark has his hand up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know I have no lost love for that country, mm -hmm. uh, and yes I agree that okay. This was done about the wrong way, and the end resultant, it's, again, it's looking in that magic eight ball, and it's going to say, ask me later, because mm -hmm. I don't have a clue what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. All I know is that a lot of people out there are very scared right now, because, let's face it, uh, Trumpenstein <laughs> ain't exactly, to me, He's not a good. He's not even a president to this point. He's a bull. He's Jewish now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it, you know, it just gets me. It's like, yeah, this was going to have to happen at some point. Yeah, yeah. It just, it's just like, oh no, God, now what? Yeah. You know, and again, it's like, okay, where's that anvil? It's going to come falling out of the sky at some point. Right, right. And it's going to have Acme written all over it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You yeah. know, so and again, we just have to watch very carefully what happens. But don't think that these bastards are going to figure out a way 
and it might be tomorrow, it might be a year from now, they're going to try something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and I said this back in the 90s when they tried to level the World Trade Towers the first time. Yeah. So that that's why I'm like, oh boy, what a fucking can of worms. And unfortunately, if this does escalate, they got to be put down. And I mean, this is going to get really bad. Yeah. Uh, I Can I uh, say that I think this is sort of timely because right now there are protests in the streets of Iran, and 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 the uh, citizens the citizens are are uh, not happy with the present government, and they're actually leaning a little bit more pro West uh, in their uh, in their chants. And so what's happening is is the at a at a time when the government is uh, really fearful of its own citizens. The citizens are getting a little bit more in their quill mm -hmm. to uh, to your, your, feel your 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 um, uh, assessment of the area is a bit lacking in uh, history. Uh, the fact is, Phil, that you can get those Iranian people to hate their own government. You know, we hate our government. So many, they hated the Shah. They let took me, the Shah. Let me out. finish what I'm saying. Yeah. They hate their they can hate their government. What their government's doing. That's one thing. To get them to love the United States is quite another. Well, you know, just, just, the just because they don't like their own government or they're having qualms about their own government doesn't mean that when they put in a new government, they're going to love the United States. Well, uh, if, if it's a government by the people... They're a little. They had loved the United States uh, in when? 1978. When? In 1978. Uh, How many years ago was that, Phil? Well, it was over 40. Yeah, yeah, well, it was, like it was over 40. Years. Come on, you're talking about another age, I'm, another I'm time. And the only time. reason they liked it was because the Shah was in power, a man we Correct. put into power at the time. No, we put him in in 1953. We, we, put but, him, but I, we put him into power, and so therefore he was on our side. And that's the only was. reason they were on our side. But the minute he was kicked out, they didn't love us at all. Well, the people still do. No, it's they don't, the Phil. People. No, it's, they it's don't. The government. No, it's they the don't. Ayatollah. You, you're, you're, you don't know the history of the area, and you don't know the mentality of what's going what on over there. Don't know. They, they could have the, they could have a democracy in there tomorrow, and they'd still hate the United States. Uh, times are changing. Even the Saudis are coming around. You know, I, I, I think the and, Saudis and the are coming around. You mean that criminal empire that goes around killing people that Doesn't we make power? What I'm saying yeah. is, is that they're not an enemy of the United States. Oh, I think they're an enemy of everybody. Yeah, they don't. Oh, the Wahhabis are, but uh, you know, the, right now, well, the we Wahhabis, the Wahhabis are them. that government. I, and we can the have Wahhabis, a good the, if, with you Iran. always talk about the we Wahhabis and the how Paris. horrible they are, and the people who run the, the, that, that country are Wahhabis. So you're not willing to consider that uh, the government is in a weakened position no, right now, no, and it's good no. for the United States, and it's not no, going to lead no. to war. No, the Saudi Arabia, the the Saudi Arabian government will never be in a weakened position because they have such a stronghold over that country. Well... You don't know what you're people. talking about, Phil. You don't know that area. You, what you do is you just believe they're a bunch of primitive people and we just have to deal with them like children. Not at all. Not at all. I believe that Yes, you do. You talk freedom. about all these they're countries oppressed. like you talk about all I, these I countries see, like I there's see a some thousand like there's in the you're talking being you talk about all these the countries government. like they are some I, kind I, of I see, You're I see, not listening wait to me. Wait a minute, Alex. I see other things like uh, Hong Kong and you know, they made 400 arrests the other day. The, a third of the country is protesting in Hong Kong. The, things are changing around the world. And to not recognize that the people of Iran want freedom, they also want What are they protesting? What are prosperity. they protesting in China? Pardon me? What are they protesting in China? Uh, I don't know that anybody protests no, in China. No, what are they protesting in, in Hong Kong? Hong Kong oh. is part of China. Phil. Oh, okay. What they're protesting in Hong Kong uh -huh. is is they want uh, their uh, self rule. They want what they were promised at the time when uh, they, uh, they the British is... handed over 
And so what the situation was yes. is what triggered it. What triggered it was they uh, tried to do a law where the people who were being accused would be tried in China and the mainland mm -hmm. and uh, under the Chinese law, and they protested that. But it's morphed into something even more uh, 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 against the, the, the rule of China uh, and, and their solidarity. So that's China. That's Hong Kong. But in what's happened in Iran is is unique to the last 40 years. They haven't had uprisings in the street because the people are saying, look, we're not getting food. We're not getting medicine. The you know why they're not? Working. You know why they're not? Oh, because of sanctions. Yeah. So right. and, and so but, so wait a minute, because of those sanctions, they're supposed to love us. But. They're, they're supposed the to love us, Phil. Wait a minute. They're supposed yes. to love us because yes. because we did those sanctions. Because we're get, we're weakening who, that government. Who were hurt the by the sanctions, the Phil? Who were over. hurt? Who were hurt by the sanctions? Well, that government seems to have enough money to fund uh, the uh, the uh, oh, here we uh, go. other other terrorist organizations, the Houthis right. in, right. in right. Yemen, Phil, uh, as well as uh, what's going on against Israel and these other factions. And so they're able to support all these other proxy wars, but they're not able to feed their people. Phil? And that's what yeah. the people of Iran okay. are pissed all right. about. All right, all right. Plus, they uh, double the price uh, of gas. Enough of your blabbing. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, uh, you get it? What? Yeah, because it's true. Let, 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 no, what, just because you say it doesn't make it true, Phil. In fact, chances are it's false. Yes, Tony. Oh, well, I didn't really have nothing to say yet. Oh, you were saying something, and that's why oh, I went I said, to you. You know, the, here's the question. Yeah, I'm not. I'm in Mark's corner. I'm really not sad that the guy died, but no. the problem is maybe he could have. I think they are trying to make nuclear weapons because didn't Obama? Sanctioned them like economically wise, like I thought he kind of hit them in the pocket a little bit, because yeah. I really don't trust them. I mean, they have a history of being shady. For how long? It, you know, it's I, it's a uh, it, it's a. Uh, he went about it a different way, maybe. I don't. Know. You know, they, you know, what I'm saying I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I would solve that whole problem. But the first thing I would do is I wouldn't have I wouldn't have stopped the nuclear thing with them. Because but as long as they would stop their nuclear program, we had a good thing going there. I mean, see, here's what I don't get. And, and I'm kind of in Mark's corner, but because I'm kind of agreeing with him, but it's a little shaky because you don't know how they're going to retaliate. Because they can't be a war. If anything, they're going to do like a 9-11. So well, yeah, well, that, that's, that, that's for certain. That's for certain. Because you can't see another, really, that, that whole thing with Saddam with Bush, this, this is kind of eerie because it's reminding me a little bit of Bush's and the, uh, Bush is not. I hate to use the word loosely. Nine Eleven, but this has. Well, if they do, if they do, if they do a, co if they try to do a covert war where they, it's not an overt war. In other words, they don't send armies marching. Okay, but yeah. they're terrorists doing stuff. That's a fight we can't fight. We don't know how yeah, to fight that's that. That's invisible. Fight. How do you do that? I yeah. mean, what's we don't know how to fight that. Build the wall. No, the you wall. don't build the wall, the Phil. They come in. A, they come in through the airport. Come so on, Phil. Don't what build the wall. You're going to build a wall around the entire United States. They'll come down from Canada. They already have a wall. They don't have a wall. They have customs. You you need a you need a passport now to get into Canada. You need. I yeah, remember as yeah. a kid, we Not never we went there. We just drove over. Yeah, I know. Canada doesn't want us there. See, here's the question. Yeah. I don't want to sound like it's a movie, but I'm actually believing. How many people do you? I actually believe there is sleeper agents here. I really believe that. Oh yeah, of course, here. of course. And there's thousands of them yeah. from all the different parts of the country. By the way, by the way, can I can I say something here? Oh, yeah. and, and this may be complete heresy, but I saw a picture today of Suleimani. Is that his name? Um, uh, I, I saw a picture of him, and. Gee, he's a good-looking guy. Yeah, uh, isn't he? More. A good, isn't he? he hate, really. Isn't he a good-looking guy? Wasn't he a good-looking guy? The only thing they sure. found was his I ring. I wouldn't take him for a terrorist. Then how did they know he was dead? Uh, That's true. I want to see the body. They found his <laughs> ring. Well, he could have taken his ring, thrown it off, and ran away. Uh, we'll see. You know, if all they found was his ring, I don't think that proof positive. That's how they that. identified him. Oh, they I said that the body was potential. so ravaged. Uh, mm -hmm. That there was nothing left but his ring. Mm -hmm. It's like a superhero movie. Yeah, it's a superhero <laughs> movie, right? <laughs> it's, it's it's like, there it is. Right.
have um, a stand. I, uh, 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 you know, I mean, the guy was not a not a good guy. There's no question about that. Not a good guy. Will you let me finish, <laughs> Phil? Can I finish one sentence without you smirking at what I say? All right. Um, no. uh, he was no, he wasn't a good guy. On the other hand, uh, I don't know that, that stopping him is going to stop the next terrorist activity because he's gone. He's not. He's not some kind of mastermind where after he's dead, it all stops. Yeah, I mean that's you know. that's kind of crazy it's, to think it's, that. It's, it's news good said story. that he was planning something imminent, and it well, was going to take a lot of. Well, lives he was always planning reason. something imminent. For Christ's sake, Phil. Could have been a Burger King. That's he why he. Well, that's world. why we he considered him a terrorist because he didn't well, do imminent things. You know. I mean, Everybody here's the question. Considers I mean, you, 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 and, and you believe that believe because somebody says. says that, and because that's the information it's that was fed to you, and since you're gullible, uh, uh, you 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 eat it all up. Well, try this one. If, if he was going to take out Hitler, you'd be pissed at Trump. Well, I would want them to take out Hitler. I would love that. If Hitler was alive today, would they have stopped that? I wonder he how he might have been alive think. today because they only found his ring. I think they. <laughs> I don't know. Did you see he went to Brazil? They said he went to Brazil. That fuck. I he could see good. It Hitler never lived. He didn't live, right? I no. would have. I would have. It was a figment of the Jews' imagination. But you know, I was reading, Alex. I, I, I was going to tell you this. They said that Olympics when they went over there, the United mm. States. I forgot what year it was. It was thirty-six. They, was it? Okay, it was. Well, one of. Them, they said that they, the United States, knew back then they had an idea what was going on. Well, they, 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 they saw the storm clouds of war. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they figured that, you know, the Olympics was something that we do in peace, and so you, you participate in it. You know, it's not like you're, you're helping the enemy by being there. It's kind of like, do we suddenly say how wonderful China is because we have Olympics there? No, it's the one time where we all get together and we put our enmity aside and we we have a a, a a big party with each other, okay? And then we can go back to our arguing and our fighting and so on. So I think that at the time the the thinking was, am I right? Does this make sense, Josh? That we just wanted to, you know, we wanted to do the right thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, the, the Olympics were pretty early on, right? I mean, and uh, that you know that he's talking about. So I mean, yeah, I mean it wasn't. Or, you know, on a war footing at that time. By the way, Phil, things. it wouldn't have been 39 because uh, the uh, Olympics are on, so it was 30, uh, are on in even years. It, it may have been 38, 36. 36, yeah. 36. yeah, I couldn't uh, remember. Mark, Mark had his hand up. Uh, yes, yes, Mark. Uh, 38. I can tell you for a fact that uh, at least in the mid-1930s, a lot of Jewish organizations in this country knew exactly what was going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... Yeah. Tried their damnedest, but you know, we see how history rolled. You know, yeah, that's what I'm afraid. You wish they would have took this guy out. They because they, they, they would give the country. Right? There was, they were getting if you had the money, you can get out. There but they would get it. They had to. That wanted uh, you know to um, uh, not have a conflict and just you know uh, Hitler will take Poland and maybe Hungary and uh, he'll stop. Uh, and, uh, you know, they didn't want to uh, push on the hornet's nest, Alex. So they let they let Hitler just run off and, and do what he wanted to do. And then you had people in this country like Henry Ford and uh, a number of other people that were, you know, kind of well, Look, we it. never wanted to enter into uh, the uh, uh, the war in Germany or that, that, par that part of the war because uh, there were too many people in this country saying, look, we just got out of a big war. We don't want to go into another war. And so um, FDR, and I'm going to say this, and a lot of people will, nobody I think will argue with me these days, FDR let Pearl Harbor happen in order to be able to mobilize and enter into the war in the Pacific and by a side event allow us to arm ourselves to go into Europe, okay? Uh, but up until that time, we weren't doing anything in, uh, in, in the war in Germany. Yeah. Um, uh, we were I, providing support for England. I think, huh? I think FDR we wanted to enter the war. I think FDR wanted to enter the war in Europe a lot earlier. Oh, I think he did, but he and, but he couldn't and he wasn't it. able to politically. Yeah. Now I don't, I don't think he let Pearl Harbor happen. I mean, I think American intelligence 
uh, uh, Josh, Resources Josh, it, it is a known fact that the Japanese left Washington, D.C. about a day or two before, vacated Washington, D.C. a day or two before Pearl Harbor happened, and we knew something was imminent. We knew it. Well, and, and we, they and knew some something people, was imminent, but I don't, I mean, there. it's not as if they knew that Pearl Harbor would be struck mm -hmm. and just allowed it to happen for, you know, expediency to make war. I mean... Uh, you know, I, I, they they didn't know that Pearl Harbor was the target. I mean, and they didn't know yeah. that it was coming when it when it came. I mean, I've I've never met, heard an interview with, read a book by a single historian who thinks that FDR knew Pearl Harbor was going to be attacked on the seventh, and said, "Well, this is good news. Throw this in the trash because this will get me into the war." I mean, I. And, I, and I'm not saying that's what you were saying. I mean, I, I think that is, that whole line of thinking is a bit of a, a, a theory that no one who's ever looked into it seriously has ever taken seriously. Yeah. I mean. Josh, you know. Phil, uh, the, um, uh, the Japanese fleet was also caught off guard in Truck Lagoon. And uh, what happened is we, we destroyed, I don't know, 50, 60 ships uh, uh, of, of, of the Japanese. And, you know, how did we do that to the Japanese without them knowing it was going to happen? They didn't let it happen. You know, I, I don't know the f full story of Truck Lagoon. Uh, I do know I want to go scuba diving there one day. But, uh, Josh, do you know anything about, you know, how the Japanese fleet went down? Or uh, maybe Mark does. I never heard anything of that story. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> Truck Lagoon is a uh, is, uh, is is got a lot of sh uh, Japanese ships that are sitting at the bottom of the lagoon. Mm -hmm. you know? and, well, I still, and we, I still, that was that was that was that their still Pearl doesn't Harbor. mean I that still doesn't mean I've heard of it. So. Well, yeah, yeah, but that was their Pearl Harbor, and you know, it, so if it could happen to us, it mm -hmm. also happened to them, yeah. and I don't think that they were uh, you know allowing it to happen. Ray Renati, you there? Ray, Ray. Yeah, Pictures up. Are you there, Ray? Well, he's, I don't think here, he's there yet. Yeah. Now we got to bring him back up again. Let's see here. Are you there, Ray? I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Would, would you turn on Hello. your camera? There we go. There we go. Let me just uh, Hello. do that. Okay. There's Ray. What do you think of all of this, Ray? Or have you just uh, haven't you been listening? I I haven't been listening. Are you talking about the attack on the? General? Well, that, that, and in general, that kind of, well, you know, what do you do in these situations? You know, do you think? Well, I, I think that he, he didn't consult Congress on an incredibly important decision. It would be the, the equivalent of killing one of our top generals. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the ramifications could be horrible. Well, the ramifications will be they're... horrible. The, yeah, the I, ramifications I, 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 are going to be horrible. Yeah, you know, I, I don't I don't get it at all. They, I, they the Iranians and uh, their allies uh, are not going to allow this to go on. Uh, oh no, they're going to they're going to retaliate. And also, I just heard that the UN is voting on whether on calling uh, deciding whether the United States is a terrorist nation. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I, I I just have to jump in. And, I mean, I'm just and, telling you. I'm not sure I agree with that. But no, no, I know it's okay. I just wanted to. I'll just do it before Phil can get to it, to just say that the UN could fucking eat a fat dick about this thing. I mean, <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, fuck what the UN's got to say. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, I, I don't know. No, no, it's not, not directed at you. I just, I mean, no, I, the UN wants to label us a terrorist organization. Please fucking do. Trump, no, is, Trump is quoted as saying he did not take this action. Well, it to, is kind of important. He did not take this action to start a war. Uh, well, but I got news for him. Uh, by taking this action, he perhaps precipitated one. So, you know, I mean, what's the difference, Donald? Well, I was just saying to my wife about a month ago that, you know, I'm sure he's going to try to start a war in order to hopefully get reelected. And, and now I see and now it's happening. You're a wag the tail guy. Well, he no. I'm not a wag the tail. No, wait a minute. So, so, so's, so's Trump. He said that about Obama, and Obama never, yeah, never did do it. I, I'm not a. I, you know, I'm actually, I, I don't have. I'm not. I'm not full, like full of hate or anything like that. I'm just trying to look at the situation for what it is. 
I mean, I just think it was a big, big mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I'm, and, and I think we're all going to pay the price. Yeah. And I don't see why we should have to. Yeah. Well. And and he could have co consulted the committee in Congress. Who's the committee that uh, there's like eight people in Congress who yeah. are supposed to be consulted on these things. He didn't. Well, you know, uh, there has never been a, anything on the part of the uh, uh, Trump administration, and correct me if I'm wrong, that even uh, almost uh, uh, bordered on any kind of diplomacy with Iran uh, or an attempt at diplomacy with Iran. It's all been his rhetoric and tweets and calling them names and everything like that. And I think that, uh, you know, d diplomacy should be your first action, not the, well, he, not the firing of a drone. He destroyed the diplomacy that Obama had started, mm -hmm. and, and um, that was his first act towards yeah. Iran, and now he's yeah. done another one. Yeah. That may cost us, I don't even want to think about what this might do. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If this I mean, is, if if Israel is threatened by an army of that size, they might end up using a nuclear weapon. What I don't like about Trump is the way he treats us like it's a John Wayne movie. Yeah. And he ain't no John Wayne. And, uh, in fact, he's a fucking coward who weaseled his way out of the military. You know? And I, I say, and I say the, that as an honored veteran. Yeah. I'm curious, and I don't know. I don't know the the rules of engagement or the laws or the protocol. But why do our why does our military do what he says when they know he hasn't gotten any prior um, consultation with any of the other branches of government? Yeah, yeah. I'm curious about that. Well, let me bring something else up uh, that should be brought up because we haven't talked about it, and it is it is important. Uh, there seems to be a new fad out there now. It's uh, called anti-Semitism. Oh. Uh, it's been getting worse and worse in the last couple of, the last year. Uh, and uh, what do we do to stop this? I mean, you know, it's not good. Uh, you know, and I, you know, as a kid, I grew up... Um, in an Italian neighborhood where I was always referred to as the dirty Jew, so I went home and kept taking showers, hoping that would help. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, I so I know what anti-Semitism is firsthand, but I never could understand it, I, I because I always wonder, what do they hate about Jews? What do we do? You know? I can't, I don't get it either. I, I, you know, I mean... Part of it, I think, is Christianity. They, uh, they, you know, the, the, Christ, the Catholic Church promoted this idea that Jews were evil and going to hell mm -hmm. and that they were the killers of Christ. And that went on for hundreds of years. Well, I was called the Christ killer in my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's where it comes from. And I went, uh, finally, I just gave up and just said, listen, uh, my people didn't kill Christ, but if you want me to say it, if he comes back again, we'll do it one more time. You yeah. know, uh, uh, it, it just, it always, but it, it just always amazed me that you know, my little Jewish family was the was hated by a group of people because they were Jewish. You know, uh, it never made much sense to me. And uh, God was a Jew too, Alex. Well, Christ was a Jew. I know. You know what it is? It's so crazy. That's why I never took religion. I used to laugh at the nuns in their face. My mother didn't even want me to. We just had to go after school to go. And I used to always get in trouble all yeah. the time. Well, I, used I used to say, I used to say to these kids at the school that you know Christ was a, was a Jew, and they say, "Well, nobody converted to Christianity." <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, how does he build an ark? I I questioned that one time when they were talking about Noah's ark. Yeah, and I wonder why this is. How could anybody put all these out? I had one dog in the house. This guy back in those days was going to put a whole fucking tribe? Come yeah. on. It's impossible. She, she used to snap her fingers. That's enough. Yeah, right. Two of every know. animal on the planet. Do you know what I mean, that would on. take? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Union it's labor. Yeah, you yeah. But, but no, what I've always, often said like about, the, about the Old Testament, the difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament is the Old Testament are fables. They are cautionary tales. They are... 
uh, simplifications of how the world came to be so that you could tell them out around a, a, a campfire and uh, tell children these stories of Adam and Eve and how the world began and how, how we got all these different languages and so on and so forth. These were, these were just fables. Whereas the New Testament purports to be history, and that's the difference between the two. Uh, and uh, uh, so that that's what really, uh, uh, really what it was all about. But I just never, you know, I never understood uh, why in the world we uh, um, Jews were so hated, and why now all of a sudden this anti-Semitism comes back when we've done nothing different than we've been doing all along. You know, maybe we've we're a little, hated all along. maybe we're a little on the annoying side, but outside of that, you know, what are we doing? I just, yeah. I just uh, on my Twitter page, uh, I think it was Sam Harris or something, he put up a video of a compilation of all these uh, Jews this year getting that, their asses kicked on various streets oh, dude, on yeah. the world. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. You know, like people with, Williamsburg, you're going crazy. I mean, they can't even walk the street down there. Yeah, they're, they're just, just walking. The cops got to start street. doing their job. I yes, think. they're just walking down the street, and someone walks up behind yeah. them and, and knocks them out. Yeah. How many Jews do we have here? Stein, you're obviously Jewish. Uh, Mark, yeah, you're you're obviously Jewish. Phil, we don't want to admit you're a Jew to other people. <laughs> uh, we would deny we would deny you three times. Uh, <laughs> you know, I just don't. I just don't understand it. It just. It makes. It's, it, it's not because I'm Jewish. I wouldn't understand if I wasn't Jewish. It just makes no sense. I've never, to begin with, racism and anti-Semitism and what have you have never made any sense to me on any level. Uh, and it's only created by people who feel they have nothing and they have to blame somebody else for that. That's, that's a good point. So well, the, look at it. Surrounding countries in the Middle East that surround Israel, that mm -hmm. hate Israel, they, they have nothing. No, they have a reason I, to hate Israel because Israel's been bombing them. I think that that has something I, I, to I do with it, Phil. I think a thousand missiles I at think, a time. I think, Phil, all I'm saying is they are being they, there is a warlike enemy there, and that's why they hate Israel. They don't hate, it's not Jews they hate, they hate Israel. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you're living in. No, a, I'm not living a in a, because I do know for a fact that there are Jews living in Iran for crying out loud. Yeah, there's five of them. No, it's, there's them. not no, five no, of them. No. There are quite a few of them. The fact is that Iran allows Jews to live in their country because they believe in monotheism. And as long as you believe in monotheism, you're okay by them religiously. It's the Israelis they don't like because it's the Israelis that they have an argument with. Mark and you, and what you do is you're one of these rare people, or one of these uninformed people who tries to equate Israel with Judaism. And please don't. Probably the Israelis. Don't I am like a Jew, either. but I'm not an Israeli. Yes, uh, Mark. Getting back to the question at hand, especially what have what has gone on up in your neck of the woods, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Your mayor is not doing a very good job with this. And mm -hmm. I'm going to say something very unpopular, probably. Mm -hmm. We don't have a Mayor Kahani right now, someone who can rally to fight people to fight back. Yeah. Well, that was the JDL. Well, and, that's, uh, yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, if I was living up there, I'd be going out with these people with a baseball bat. Well, you know what they're doing? I joined they the JDL in 1969. They're gearing mm -hmm. themselves. Yeah, you know, they made the news. Well, I never, I never liked the JDL, but I, 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 I know what you're saying, Mark. And the fact is that uh, uh, that, that we need some kind of um, activism, let's say, yeah. against like this. I said, the yeah. blamo up there. He's, I, oh God, don't get me started. I, I don't even live up there anymore, and I'm still furious. You know? <laughs> what is it that you're upset with? What, well, they, what is it's it? every day when I turn the news on, they're getting people are just getting jumped. Just oh, you're talking the, about how the anti-Semitism? Yeah, the I mean, city really is not bad. doing. Wait a minute, anything. let me let, let Mark talk. Yes, oh, Mark. sorry, sorry. But it, it, I'm furious about this. You know, it's like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm like, wake the fuck up. This guy is not a friend to the Jews. I don't no. care what he says. Um, 
it's it, it's just madness to me, and I, I, I you know I'm afraid to even read the news anymore. Um, I I um, you know I I agree with you. I mean I I've, I've never I've not been that hot about this mayor. The only thing that I was happy about was when he was running for president. It got him out of town a lot. He you know? was gone. It was, it was nice smooth sailing. Yes, but it's sad because you know what? It's almost like you really want them. Hopefully they you they have to take their streets back. It's almost like. You, I hate to say this, but when you see somebody get hit, I wish somebody was there just to break their leg, really. I'd like to have a bat and just break their leg if I was there. I would do it. Yeah. If I had a bat and they hit the guy or anything, I'd say, okay, you know what? I got a bat, so you got your hand, I'll break your leg. These yeah. chicken shits. That I mean, this is what they really need. They're hitting innocent people, really. What we need is a few, a few, a few, a few, we need a few Italians like you. Uh, to I mean, be on, be on our side. I'm not be, a violent person. Be on person. our side. I mean, yeah. that's sad, though, really. Yeah. They need their ass kicked. These Tony, people. I'll come out there for a couple of weeks and, and we'll we'll just hide well, in the corner. The Goomba. I mean, isn't it a shame that you have to, but you know what? I'm not a violent guy, but it's almost like you really want to see these people get their, do, their due. Oh, man. If I see shit like that, I get violent. I, I mean, mean, I have in the past, like and I would. I hate it. I can't stand watching someone take advantage of somebody and like that's that. What they're it drives doing, me right? nuts. I don't know. It's an shame that we're thinking like this, that we got to strike back. Yeah. Phil, we're starting to think like Phil. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it, it isn't a question I mean, of, 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 of so much striking back, but it's just that I just don't know where it's coming from all of a sudden. And then say if you strike back and they pull a gun out and they shoot the person. You know, and because, you... for instance, there's a black organization. Um, what they call black them? Hebrew Israelites. Yeah, black, black Hebrew That's Israelites, great. and a lot of the, uh, a lot of it's the a hate organization. Yeah, a lot of the stuff is coming out of there now. You know, and, uh, and um, uh, I mean, I understand. I've understood for years the the reason why a lot of blacks didn't like Jews, uh, and it had to do with uh, with places like Harlem, where all the Jews used. To, you know, Harlem used to be a Jewish ghetto, as it were. And and when the Jews finally started doing okay and could move out, they moved out of Harlem, but they kept the stores. And so the only relationship that black person had with Jews were the people who ran the stores, and they knew these people would be taking advantage of them, and, and also the landlords and everybody else. Those were the only Jews that they had anything to do with, and these were the worst kind of Jews you can possibly <clears throat> imagine, all right? And uh, they got an attitude about Jews. I understand it because it comes from somewhere, okay? So I can say, okay, now I'll have to dissuade you from believing that because I'm a good Jew, okay? Get to know me. But the fact of the matter was that I understand where that <coughs> hatred came from. Uh, and um, uh, But it, 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 I don't understand where this... Uh, this uh, it comes from the money lending in the... Uh, in, in the uh, uh, on almost medieval times, the Jews, uh, the, there are certain religions, they didn't allow money lending. So they said, hey, let's let the Jews do this money lending stuff. And uh, the, yeah. the interest and things like that uh, mm -hmm. became something that people hated, and therefore they hated the Jews. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think it all, it all kind of stems from that. Yeah. Read The Merchant of Venice by Shakespeare. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. 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 I mean, Shylock. He's a Shylock. Yeah. But I'm I mean, it's, I just, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it's not like I'm afraid for myself here, but, you know, it's still, it, it I, I, uh, you know, I, I, Phil, look, Phil is with a group of guys who go with guns to the, uh, to the, to the temple on sure. Friday, not to pray, but to, uh, look for guys who are going to be shooting, <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a sh shame that it comes down to we're thinking of violence to come back. It's a shame that, that we've been stripped down to their level, like. Maybe they're just, just trying the to make the cops ain't really great. doing the job. They should no. be. In that well, area. they should. They should be doing the job. I mean, Phil shouldn't have to do what he's doing. Yeah. Okay. Because I mean, the police should be doing it, uh, and and uh, uh, the government should be doing it. I mean, why not? Uh, why don't we bring in a few military people to the various synagogues to watch out for them? Uh, you know, it's funny. Yesterday we went. Uh, we had the funeral for Jack, mm -hmm. and then we went past a certain part of Queens it's very Jewish you can see but it was like uh, yeah. a festival of Paeus you know the, the, uh, and was the last and, day of Hanukkah 
Be I, uh, no, it wasn't. The last day of Hanukkah was a couple of weeks ago. That's what kind of Jew you are. Anyway, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. It wasn't wasn't uh, it, it? How how long ago did it end, uh, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, Jeff, when did it end? Just about two days. ago. Oh, two days, days ago. Okay. Anyway, yeah, what kind of Jew are you? Anyway, so <laughs> so we're going we're, we're we're going through this segment section of town Maybe for where there are Hasidic Jews like crazy, and they've even got like you know a Torah mobile or something oh, like that, oh. you know, uh, Davin mobile, things like that, and everywhere, police. A police it presence. It was Muncie where they had the stabbing uh, in yeah. Rockland County. But I mean a police presence like you wouldn't believe. I mean, I saw not only the police cars like crazy, but the, you know, the vans, the police oh, SWAT vans, van. the SWAT vans. Yeah, just to, watching over the neighborhood because of the anti-Semitism that's running rampant right now. Um, couldn't believe I live, it. Yeah, What? I live right next to a Hasidic Jew temple around yeah. the corner. Yeah, uh, they're lucky down. here. They never no, they never get bothered here in my our neighborhood. <laughs> just, they don't even worry about it. Well, but I'm yeah. in the middle of Palo Alto. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it it it's just uh, uh, it it's getting it's getting fairly um, virile and um, vile and uh, horrible. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do about it. You know. Um, but uh, we, you, you know, I while I always give Phil a bad time about going with his gun to the synagogue, where I think it should be the government that does it, about having like National Guard uh, people there or uh, the police departments having somebody there. It shouldn't be a um, what can we call it a, a vigilante group to protect it, but they need it. Where's uh, your separation of church well, and state? What, what I'm saying is, is that right now, well, isn't it quite? This is not separation of church and state. This is the uh, state uh, standing up for religion and for church. The uh, cops can't do it. You know, if the cops can do on, it, Phil. The cops can do it. If they're all, all I'm saying, if there's, it, it, it's a question of a presence. Anyway, the, the, that's not the point. The point I'm making is, I give Phil a bad time about this because I do think. That when we have people like Phil doing this, we take the onus of, of doing something about it off the government, and we we uh, uh, abate them of the of the responsibility of doing this sort of thing, and uh, I I I just think it's sad that Phil has to go do that, you know. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of attacks in Sikh temples as well, and the Sikhs are being mistaken for uh, for Muslims. And, oh, yeah, you know, that always and, and happens. The, hate, yeah. the yep. hate that happens there. So the Sikhs should get the well, police protection, and the Muslims should get the police protection. Absolutely. And the Jews should absolutely. get the police protection. You know, absolutely, you know, Phil. The, you got to do what, it yourself. What the fuck are the police for? They're not for that. Oh, they're not for that? If they're not for that, then what are no, they you, for? You can't call the police until it's a crime. They it's, come it's to take a report. Bill, if, if you can't call the police till there's a crime, why were all those police out in Queens the other day watching over the Hasidic Jews? It was no, because the no, press was Phil, there. No, Phil. Why could mm. if if you if it has to be a crime first? No, there doesn't. There has to be an eminent danger. They, they can soup up the patrol, but they can't put that kind of manpower uh, uh, hey, every Friday. If, if you can't put that kind of manpower to that, what do you put it to? That's one of the most important things you can do when you know there's an imminent threat. You do something about it, Phil. They they have services that uh, not the not the maybe if they stop services, eating but, fucking donuts and show up at so, a shul somewhere. So the question is why would why why should you get killed doing it? Uh, because I believe in volunteerism, and I also believe that uh, I need to do the right thing. And if I don't stand up, who will? The police should. I don't think that's your reason. I think, I, I think the reason is, Phil, you like toting a gun is what you like doing. He uh, does like to bring a gun out of it. Yeah, because that, that's what happened down in Texas, right? They, they had the same situation. They had yeah, citizens like, watching that place. Like yeah, a guy like you took him out, but a guy like you went down as well. That's true. Are you could happen. Your life? That's what happened is one, one of those guys went down. 
I don't know if it was one of those. The guys good news would be Phil. The, the good was. news would be Phil. If you, got, if you got if you got taken down by protected. a sniper, if you got taken down by a sniper in a situation like that, the good news would be no more prostate problems. <laughs> no, I don't have those don't either. Don't shoot, Bob. I'm below the waist. I got problems. <laughs> at the end of the day, no. at the end of the day, they're citizens and they should be protected by the well, police. Well, I just, I, I just I think, look, standing up and doing the right I, thing. I, I look, I'm always, no, I've always, that part too. The for the longest time, I've been against uh, oh. people having to like get money together to help certain things and so on. When a lot of times these these things are the job of the government, it's the reason we have a government. It's the reason we pay taxes. You know, uh, it, it, if it isn't for those reasons, why is it? You know, and every time we do something the government should be doing, and we like maybe take up a, a you know get a lot of money together to help people because something happened to them when the government should be doing it, we take the responsibility of, of taking care of it off of the government. And saying, "Oh well, we'll take care of it." No, no. And they say, "Okay, the we'll do something." Is our else. responsibility. What? What the government does is our money, and what the government does is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, so why not be able to do it privately too? I always believe that the private sector was what should no, support I, those. No, I need. honestly believe that the government should and take charity. care of most of these things where there is a something at, at risk. OK, sure. and that, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that well, we but why should we, uh, you know, when we talk about like, oh, well, let's give money so that we can uh, cure cancer, cure a disease. The government should be curing the disease. The government should be putting out that what do you money. Think pays that. No, but that's why that's but why we have what? a government, Phil. That's why, why we people that believe that the disease, the disease should be cured, be the ones that volunteer their money and their time, their effort and their research. If, if you don't believe that it's important, you shouldn't have to be forced to pay for it. You, you should, you know, if you're, you're not going to stand up. Look, look, the reason we pay taxes is because we got this big pot of money and then we run our government and we run our services and we, and we help our people using that pot of money. And how we use that money is very important. And the minute we tell the government that it's not your responsibility anymore, we'll take care of it. Then well, we should then take we take the responsibility off the government. No, they should take more of our money and use it properly. Well, that's, they, I, 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 that's where we differ. You know, you have a socialistic view of no, the way I the government should I have a big socialistic operate. view, Phil, because I live in a society. Yes, Jeff. I do too, Jeff. I, I think I think Phil forgets about that if there'd be police with a police uh, car out by the synagogue, it's a lot more effective than having Phil yeah. standing. Yeah, I'm agreeing on that's true. You know, I that's why I believe in concealed copy. weapons. Because the bad guy doesn't know who's got Phil, it and who doesn't. Phil, you have a concealed uh, weapon. The, if you yeah, had a cop car outside, car. it says... <laughs> Do not fuck around here because we we have. Yeah. Hold on a second. There's a police presence. Shut. Up, fuck, listen to me for they a second. There's a police presence. But when you're thin there and you have your gun hidden and they don't know that, mm. hey, yeah, they, no, let's go if, in and start shooting the place up. Guy. And if if we're lucky, Phil will get off a few shots Alex? and stop a yeah. few of them. But, but there'll be enough people dead before it's over Look, with. If yeah, I was a bad guy and there was a police car out there, shut up, Tony. If there was a bad guy and, and there was a police car You're gonna out there, get away what with am that, I going to do? I take out the policeman. That's the first thing I take out. You're is, you know, you take out the cop, and then you go in and you do your damage. And you might do it simultaneously. You have one of your partners take out the cop as you make your way in to start shooting well, up okay, the so, uh, no, sanctuary. Yeah, I think you're full. Sure. That, that's how it's done. Yeah, you know, right. they, they you have multiple it. guys. Right. Yeah, you're just you know you're just speaking comp speak. Anyway, um, that's uh, what you want to, to do the job. Well, you know? I I just feel that I'm that, sure that you that know too. they they were out there in I don't know it wasn't Bensonhurst but it was in Queens. Williamsburg. Yeah, uh, Williamsburg. Williamsburg. Yeah, exactly Williamsburg. where I was. Williamsburg. Williamsburg, in Brooklyn. You're yeah. right. I was leaving Brooklyn. We went to Queens. The whole <laughs> we went over to Queens to bury him, um, and. Um, uh, um, uh, they they were there, 
you know, the police were there. I mean, in full force. I mean, I'm not talking about just, you know, oh, hey, look, there's a police car and there's a police car. No, there's a police car, there's a police car, there's a police car. There's, I think we saw maybe 10 police cars and about two or three vans. Were they there for Jack's funeral? Maybe, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, you yeah, know, it was um, uh, whatever. Yeah, I uh, went to his funeral yesterday. You know, it's funny. It's very weird. I, I I don't know how to. I'm still not able to process it. That I was with him two nights earlier, and he, uh, granted, he was uh, dying in the process of dying, and he had tubes in him, and. You know, I kissed his forehead, and I told him I loved him. But he was warm, and he was there. And that uh, two days later, I'm dropping dirt into his grave, you know. And um, uh, it, 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 I'm still not, I'm having a hard time processing that, uh, you know. That, that uh, And I don't know. I just, I, you know, I, I, you get to say, here's a guy who had a life that was so full of stuff, you know, and learning, and uh, 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 an accomplishment. And then when he reaches the height of that accomplishment, you die. And what was it all worth it for? Well, but why life, did, life yeah. doesn't go on forever, and it's what yeah. they leave, they created, and your memory mm -hmm. that will keep his life alive. Well, you know. uh, uh, my memory is going to be gone pretty soon, too. But anyway. Yes, but you, you did something the point is, to preserve yeah. his memory. Uh, yeah, the point is that, you know, that uh, he was, I got to tell you, and I, he said this constantly to me, he was in mortal fear of what is happening to this country because of what he went through in the Holocaust. And he said he sees it happening again. Yeah. Courtesy of Donald Trump. Uh, it's been happening. No, no, a no long don't time. say hey, don't say that, Phil. I'm you're talking to this is coming from a guy who has been there. He has seen the whole process happen and how he was allowed to be hauled off to the concentration yeah. camps and the mentality that went on in those countries at the time and he said what's going on now is simply a memory of what happened before. Anti-Semitism has been very prevalent no, in Europe. No, this is the, not anti-Semitism. This is the stupidity of a country who then engages in genocide. Okay? okay. And he, all I'm saying is he said he saw it before and now he sees it happening again. Donald Trump is You don't the know what you're talking about. You in you Israel. weren't in a concentration camp. You don't know what it's about. No, but I he do did. know someone he that saw. was. Huh? And oh, I, oh, good. I, I had the privilege yeah. of yeah. knowing their story, yeah. hearing their story, yeah. Yeah. and knowing them yeah. personally. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, yeah. and their story was narrated, like I said, by uh, Spielberg's. Uh, oh, people Spielberg! Came fuck in Spielberg! Him fuck Spielberg with that goddamn say, fucking fuck movie. It was a great interview. No, it, it, fuck Spielberg. Yeah. Well, Fuck you know, well, I've got it. I've got it right here. I, I don't want to hear it. and I don't want to see it. We got to go anyway. I don't care if you got it there. Proof he's got it there. You know, uh, Spielberg with his goddamn Schindler's fucking list with the girl with the red dress on. You know, uh, hey, you know, John, uh, I was going to say Mark. OK, OK. Yeah, fine. I've seen it before. <laughs> Um, 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 uh, uh, Mark, we love having you yeah, here. Call back, Alex. Huh? Thank you. Yes, please call back more often. We love having you here. Charlie, we love having you here. You've been a little quiet tonight. Anything you want to say uh, before we uh, call this thing uh, uh, um, uh, a show? No, I've I'm, been I'm enjoying the conversation. Okay. Uh, Josh? Thank you for your yeah. participation tonight. Good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, 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 uh, um, uh, Phil, thank you once again for the uh, yeah. for the arguing. Um, yeah. Uh, the only thing I wish is I could have talked to Mark a little bit about uh, Leica. You know? Yeah, well, uh, that, 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 <laughs> you know. Right. Why don't you call him? I don't know. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Call him or write him. He unfriended him. me. <laughs> huh? <laughs> He unfriended me. Oh, he Friend unfriended you? Oh, okay, good. Uh, yeah, good for you, Mark. Uh, uh, Jeff Stein, thank you so much. Uh, Kevin, thank you. Mark, please call again soon, really soon. Uh, also, Tony, thank you. And thanks to Ray Renati as well. It's great having you here, Ray. 
Thank you. Uh, you and through? I'm sorry I told Tony to shut up. I, 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 uh, I regret that. Are you <laughs> through? Uh, no, don't regret it. You were in Beretta mode. It. Tony, shut up. <laughs> Uh, Ray Renati, <laughs> thank you. Uh, all of you, why don't you give a big a wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back. Here we go. There they go. Okay, that's our citizen panel. They're uh, they're getting the hell out of here, and we're getting the hell out of here until next Tuesday. Now, I may be here Tuesday night. I may not be here Tuesday night. What's happening is I'm having a procedure uh, in which I'm going to be put out for 10 minutes, uh, which... Uh, uh, it is kind of, you know, uh, dicey. So we don't, I don't know what condition I will be in or how early in the morning I have to do that procedure. But if I can do it, I will do a show on, uh, on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, meanwhile, I want to remind you that Damien is going to be doing a show now on Mondays from um, 9 o'clock until 10 o'clock at night. Eastern Time and maybe beyond. He can take as long as he wants. And uh, he will be here uh, doing that show this coming Monday night. So please, if you can, uh, phone in, make him feel welcome, and uh, well, whatever. Anyway, listen, I gotta go. I'll see you again hopefully Tuesday, if not Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, yeah, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Okay, bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.